Welcome everyone to an informative video on the updates to the spells from Warhammer 2 here going into Warhammer 3. Some of these updates are substantial and others are just minor. However, it still might make you think twice about certain spells. This video will focus mainly on stat card changes rather than the in-game damage profiles. However, if you'd like to see some in-game damage profile changes, do feel free to leave a comment below. Now, this took an awful lot of preparation, so please do give me some time and understand that this wasn't very easy. But, however, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So, we are going to be starting with the Law of Life. Uh, quite a few changes here in this Winter Magic, and uh, yeah, a lot to take in for sure. So we are going to start here with Earthblood. So in Warhammer 2, it was 6 Winter Magic for 336 healing in a 30 meter radius. Now what's changed? So now it's going to be a 35 meter radius spell. It's still going to be 6 Winter Magic, but it's going to heal as a percentage. So it's going to come here as 0.8% per second. So of course here, the more health you've got, the more healing you get. So instead of it being just a stat change there of 336 for only four models as well, so you can, that could be SEMs, that could be any sort of infantry units, cavalry, whatever it may be, the game would have picked the four most expensive and it would have just healed those elements. Here, it's gonna heal as much as possible in a 35 meter radius as a percentage. So depending on how you use Earthblood will depend on if it's gonna be a, a nerf or even a buff here in the game. Uh, and also that increased radius is also going to be very nice, especially when we've got domination points as well that we can fight over. Uh, it's really going to help that. And even then on the land battles as well, especially because we're going to be more spread apart, having that extra meter radius is certainly very nice. So extra changes here are also going to come from the overcast element. So if we do overcast it here, we are going to see it's just going to be a longer duration. So instead of being a flat sum of 672, it's just going to be an extra 7 seconds of healing. So although it is double there directly by number from Warhammer 2, uh, here in Warhammer 3, it's going to be a centered just for that duration of time. So the longer you can stay in that aura, you can actually heal up a lot more. So there's actually a potential for a lot of healing here coming from Warhammer 3. So the second spell I'm going to focus on is going to be the Shield of Thorns. Uh, quite different indeed. So in Warhammer 2, we actually got that 20% physical resistance and then also the increase to base weapon damage. Now that was there for 8 Winds of Magic, but here in Warhammer 3, a very, very different change. 7 Winds of Magic for melee damage reflection. That's going to be plus 14. Maybe this is something, maybe a later video I can go into, but it's a very, very different idea indeed. And uh, I don't know quite yet if I think it's a buff or a nerf. Uh, it's going to be cheaper, it's not quite as impactful, and especially when you consider overcasting. So if we actually overcast here in Warhammer 2, we got a, I believe, a 40 meter radius. As you can see, there's 60% on the base weapon damage and 20% physical resistance. If we overcast here, we can see there's a greater effect on the melee damage reflect. And uh, yeah, it's... I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I really liked overcasting Shield of Thorns. I, I feel like there was a lot of good stuff that came out of this spell. Uh, perhaps it just, maybe the game design thought, maybe for Domination needed a bit of a nerf. Not too sure. But either way, I think this one's a bit of a nerf, but we'll have to see what time says. And maybe some more videos here and some testing in the future could perhaps prove that Shield of Thorns maybe could be quite useful. So for the third spell, we are going to be moving here into Flesh to Stone. Flesh to Stone is another spell here from Warhammer 2 that gave plus 60 armor. So in Warhammer 3, what are the changes? Warhammer 3 is going to give directly physical resistance. So as you can see here in Warhammer 2, it was for 44 seconds. While as you can see, the main difference here is going to be 19 seconds. Now, 60% physical resistance is by far head and shoulders above 60 armor. So that's why you're going to be seeing a much reduced time period. And even with an overcast, it's going to double there to 38. If you do it there for Flesh of Stone, it goes to 88. So 88 seconds is an awfully long time. And I actually think the shorter period of just better resistances is going to be far better. I don't think you're ever going to be fighting, you know, something for, you know, that long. Maybe maybe actually here in the domination point you might, but I, I certainly think 60% physical resistance is, uh, is head and shoulders above. So for the fourth and final spell, we actually, of course, see a change in regrowth. Now it's going to change in regrowth, not just for the regular, but also overcast as well. So we can see here the vigor is still going to exist, but it's still a 0.8% heal. But you can see the time duration is 29 seconds. Now it's going to be on a single unit. You're not going to see a meter radius there, but of course 29 seconds, because it was, I believe, 7 and 14 there for Earthblood. But 29 is so long indeed, especially as a percentage if you, you put in that maybe on Kugath or something, you're going to see some exceptional healing. Now, if we overcast it, it actually does increase the heal per second to 1.2. And, uh, you know, you still get that negative on the Vigor. So, you know, it's just going to be a faster way of healing. 
And uh, yes, yeah, regrowth, overgrowth, regrowth, I believe is one of the fastest ways to heal in the game. So yeah, it's gonna be very, very strong indeed. If we take it here into effect, for the overcast, you can see there was two stat figures, and the second one there is going to be 2,088. So it was a it was a set heal, which can be great, but can also not be great. So you know it, it really depends on what you're healing here. So with that, we're actually going to be ending there on the uh, life magic. But there's been four wins there that have been changed quite nicely with the Earth Blood Regrowth, Shield of Thorns, and Flesh to Stone. Dwellers Below and Awaken the Woods, pretty much stat card wise, are going to be exactly the same. There might be some in-game damage changes. However, I won't be touching on that today. So the next one here, we will be going in with the Beast Magic. So here, going to be quite a few changes indeed. So we are going to start here with Wildsense Wild Form. Now this is going to be, uh, you know, some of these changes will be quite small, and this is going to be one of them. So the change here is we can see 40 meters of radius up against 35. That's pretty much going to be the main change. Winds of Magic, exactly the same. It's going to be eight wins on both sides. Uh, the damage, or should we say the increased profiles here, the buffs are going to be exactly the same, but it's just going to be a reduction of five meters. Now, of course, with Domination, what does that really mean? I'm not really too sure yet, but, you know, certainly on land battles, you're going to see that effect. And a lot of these buffs are going to be going from 40 meters down to 35. Duration is going to be the same. Pretty much everything else is going to be the same. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think for the most part, just a, just a small nerf. Nothing, nothing too much to write home about. So the next one is going to be Flock of Doom. Flock of Doom has definitely had some changes. Uh, Flock of Doom uh, in, in game two was going to be having 30 meters of radius. So we're going to have 35 here for Flock of Doom. Uh, damage per second uh, seems to be a little bit more stronger here for uh, plus 25 troops or above. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely going to be seeing an increase in the radius there for the cheap spell of Flock of Doom. Still going to be the same Winds of Magic, and uh, I believe Overcast is still going to be the same there as well, just a longer duration of time. So still, plus 5 meters, nice little, nice, nice little juicy buff. So Pants of Punishable Pelt, this is going to be a nice little change in the game. Uh, one I really like quite indeed. We are going to be having the speed change. So 24 melee defense, 20% physical resistance. It's going to be the same there for uh, Warhammer 2. But then we're also getting that 25% speed buff. So if you do want to use it to protect something and also get it out of there, it's uh, really going to help as well. And I believe in the second stage, there's a slight nerf, I believe. In the second stage, there'll be a slight nerf to the meter radius. Yes, the meter radius will go from 40 down to 35, but you're still going to get that speed buff. So same with the magic. It's going to be a small buff there with the added speed, but then you're also, you know, it could be quite nice there for a charge. If you're going to be charging in with something, increase that melee defense, increase that physical resistance, and just give it that little bit more punch there as it gets in, and then you can pull it out nice and easy. You can also get a 40 meter radius, which will now be 35, but it you know, depends really how the game evolves and if that's a lot to write home about or not. So we're then going to move on to the Curse of Anera. Curse of Anera, of course, uh, an extremely strong spell. 11 wins of magic still on both games here. Uh, we are going to have a nice change, though. Is it also going to be negative accuracy, which is going to be added here to the roster? Uh, so a nice little, nice little buff there. You know, nice little freebie. How, how useful it is? Not too sure. Very good on Skirmish Cavalry, perhaps. Uh, you know, especially if you're kiting uh, maybe with some Poison to Cavalry. Uh, you know, having that negative accuracy can be quite nice. And then also there is going to be a reduction on range. You guys have to be more accurate with spells like Curse of Anera. Uh, and all these debuff spells like Panzer Penetrable Pelt. Uh, you are going to need to be more accurate with five less meters of range, but I, perhaps that's just a little way of uh, balancing these debuffs and buff spells. So the last one I will go on to, I didn't actually make a little card for this, I do apologize, but a little be, a little debuff here for the transformation of Gadon. Nothing too much to write home about, just going to be the uh, range. Uh, all the range there was 60 before, they're now going to be down to 50 meters. So that's just something to take into consideration. So that will end off there the beast magic and now we're going to move through to high magic. So for high magic we are going to see uh, yet again quite some changes. So apotheosis here is going to be five wins of magic. It's going to be the same here for the warhammer side but of course we are going to see a change in the healing. Now here we are going to be healing one target was of course uh, apotheosis did the same for 480 healing. So you actually got more there than earthblood but you could only ever heal one target. Now you do imbue fear which is also you know maybe maybe a nice little addition uh, but apart from that uh, yeah nothing really too much to write home about. It's just going to be a different type of healing. So whether we're going to see apotheosis get some benefits out of this not too sure. It's actually going to be longer than earthblood uh, just to compensate there on the time you can see it's going to be 10 seconds rather here than coming in for seven. But of course, if you overcast Earthblood, you get more healing for Apotheosis. You only get further range. 
So for the next one, we are going to see a minor change in Soul Quench. So Soul Quench is going to have some small changes. So Soul Quench here is actually going to have the Quench ability. So you can see in the first game, still two, still seven wins of magic on both sides, still 300 meters, uh, cooldown the same as well, 43 seconds. But it's going to be the small Quench ability, which is going to be three seconds of added damage after impact which is uh, going to be quite an interesting one i don't believe it did this before or if it did it's not on the stat card so that's going to be something there it's going to be rather interesting to take into consideration uh with quench you know at least if you're hitting there you're going to be doing damage to maybe all of the units that you did hit just to maybe even help you finish off those units so moving here to a lovely big change so tempest big change so tempest used to have a 60 percent reduction on speed and then it was pretty good versus single combatant. It did a lot of magic damage, etc. Now it's going to be a complete net. If you get in there, you get stuck. And uh, you cannot move at all. Damage frame, I don't know if that's going to be improved or um, or not here from, from Warhammer 2. But uh, duration is going to be 17 seconds. And it was 11 there in the previous game. Winter Magic is going to be a little bit more expensive at 10. And I believe if you overcast it, it just uh, does it make it a meter radius. I can't remember what this does. Oh, it just increases the damage profile. Okay, just increases the damage profile. I thought it'd be a wider radius, but it's going to be 20 meters. It's a really good spell. I think Tempest is going to be used a lot. And I'm really excited to see what it's going to do in the game. Especially when you have flyers that are also going to be quite painful to deal with. Um, yeah, just extra damage. And actually, a pin is quite nice. Because I saw a lot of Tempest is used where you just saw like a dragon just kind of move away from it. And then all of a sudden, that damage just wasn't being utilized anymore. So yeah, nice little update there. So Fire of the Convocation, yet again, uh, is going to be uh, just a tiny winning update. Nothing really too much to write about. Uh, Fire of the Convocation used to take 10 seconds uh, to get its duration out. This one here is now going to be 3. So it's actually quite a big reduction in time for the duration. Um, I wonder if it's just going to be you know more explosive damage in a shorter shorter period, which might actually make it a little bit harder to dodge. Um, haven't used this one myself. Uh, so I haven't seen all of the changes. However, it could be quite interesting. Seven meter radius. So we're looking a little bit wider than Pronounable Pendulum, which could be, uh, which is actually quite a powerful spell here in Warhammer 3. So it should be interesting to see how far the Convocation changes. Winter Magic going to be the same. Uh, cooldown is going to be the same. Uh, apart from that, it's just going to be the duration. So seven second reduction. Should be interesting to see what we can do here with the spell. So that's going to finish off the High Magic. Yet again, lots of changes. Lots and lots and lots of changes indeed. So, the Law of Death will be the next one. Law of Death here, we will be going with Aspect of the Dread Knight. A lovely change indeed. A very, very minor, but very nice as well. So here, of course, you can see it's going to be 16 seconds uh, from both sides. It's going to be four wins of magic, but the nice thing here from Aspect of the Dread Knight Warhammer 3, it gives leadership. Fantastic. Love it. I, I love it. Aspect of the Dread Knight was already used. Uh, I don't think this makes it OP. I just think it's just a nice little addition. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's pretty good indeed. Um, there will be one slight debuff, which might be the reason why they put the leadership in, which will be actually the overcast. So with the overcast, it's going to go from 40 down to 35 meter radius. So it's just going to be a little bit smaller there. So perhaps the leadership was to just balance out the overcast. But yeah, nice little overcast, no changes, uh, just a nice little addition. So Doom and Darkness, uh, yet again, I think we'll be seeing quite a few of these kind of changes. Um, pretty much the main one is just going to be from 40 down to 35 meters. Uh, when we get at the overcast here, yeah, 35 meter radius, negative 16 leadership, still same winds and magic. It's just going to be five meters less. So you, you just got to be more accurate and use it at more correct times. And uh, duration and the rest is going to be the, the same. So I think here, for the most part, just um, when you're using some of this winds of magic, because we'll be moving into the next one as well, which is going to be Soul Blight. Soul Blight will also have the same effect, whether it's overcast or not. 35 meter radius compared to 40. So just have to wait for those key moments so that we can use it. But Soul Blight, part up with Doom and Darkness here, uh, and also maybe even Aspect of the Dread Knight coming on a point could be quite useful here. If you're on a domination point, having all those three down, well, that's going to be a lot of hurting indeed. So from here, we'll be moving into the Law of Vampires. Law of Vampires here will be starting with the Dance Macabre. So the Dance Macabre, this is going to be the overcast variant. Yet again, uh, we're going to be seeing uh, a, a decrease in the effect range. Uh, from 40 meters down to 35, that can actually be quite huge um, for the Vampire faction. Obviously, they're quite slow. They need those debuffs with a lot of their slow units when they get to the front line. And, uh, you know, they, they generally go quite wide here with the Vampires. You know, go a lot of zombies, Graveguard, etc., uh, you know, having that being a bit shorter here, whether that's going to be on land battles or that's going to be here on the domination points. You know, it, it all adds up. It all makes it significant. And of course, overcasting it 
may not be the way to go. So the next ones are going to be the invocation of Nehek. Now, I'm sure you're, you're expecting this already. We've seen two changes, and it's going to be percentage healing. Now, I actually think this is a nerf for invocation of Nehek on the regular on the regular cast, as uh, it is going to be 18 seconds. So in theory, the, the mathematics should be the same. It should still get about 864, but it really depends what you're healing here. It really, really depends what you're healing. Um, and also, know you know what sort of healing cap you're going to be having as well with these with these elements. So 0.8% um, during during this uh, 200 meters for 18 seconds. Yeah, it should be interesting to see. And of course, it's just a it's just a click. So it should be interesting to see if this 0.8 is going to perform the same as the old invocation or not. Overcast, big changes as well. Uh, we'll be seeing here. Uh, actually, a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a buff, actually, which is quite nice. Uh, we are going to go from 30 meters to 35 meters, so it's actually going to widen the range of which you can heal, which actually is going to be extremely nice here. So I think maybe it's really hard to say. I think it could potentially be a buff uh, for the beginning, or it could be enough. It's really hard to say, but I definitely think the second one is uh, is a buff for sure. That five meter extra radius of healing, very nice indeed. Very very nice. So the last one here is going to be Raised Dead. Uh, so if we do move down to Raised Dead, uh, we are going to see just uh, just the classic one as well, which is going to be 60 meters here, as you can see at the top, target ground 60 meters, going down to range 50 meters, which is going to be for all spells. Uh, you know, so for example, if you go with Thoric Ironbrow on his anvil, uh, you, if you're within 100 meter radius and you do a cast, uh, you take damage. So you just got to be closer and closer here for summons. It's going to be really hard to push those forward on domination points, etc. And, uh, you know, it's only 10 meters, but, you know, every little helps. You know, if that being increased to 75 or 100, whatever, etc., it certainly does make a difference here on a battle. So that's going to be the end of the vampires. There are three changes there that could be quite significant indeed. And now we're going to move forward here onto wild magic. So Wild Magic, of course, quite controversial as well. A lot of people are saying that uh, definitely in the last patch here for Warhammer 2, we saw some big changes. You can see one already in front of you. So Dissolve, big change. So Dissolve is actually going to increase a negative leadership as well. So previously, negative 24 minute attack, charge bonus, and speed bonus did get reduced. It's now also going to be leadership. Damage profile is still going to be the same. I think it's roughly a flock of doom. Uh, but Four Winds of Magic is, you know, it's going to be pretty cheap. Duration 20 seconds uh, on both and uh, yeah, 100 meter radius. So it's gonna be the same otherwise, just a nice little addition there of leadership with no extra cost to winds of magic. So if we do go with the overcast here, we'll see, uh, I believe actually a little bit of a debuff. It's gonna be 40 from last game, 40 meters down to 35 meters here for the overcast, which is gonna be a pretty pretty standard thing going forward here for Warhammer 3. So uh, a slight buff. So the leadership actually, you know, might be the same as there as the aspect of the Dread Knight. Uh, it's just a little bit of a, a nice buff there for the cheap one. And, you know, maybe to balance out here as well, uh, for the overcast. So the next one is going to be Tradekin, and I think a lot of you might be a little bit scared by this. Tradekin's getting a buff, ladies and gentlemen. Tradekin is getting a buff. Now, I don't know about the damage profile. I won't be going through it, but the small buff is going to be that meter radius. It's going from 30 meters, coming up here to 35 meters. So, yep, there we go. Yet again, it's going to be a wider effect, more damage, and, of course, the same speed. Damage profile, and maybe I'll do a video on this a little bit later on to see where we're at. But uh, yeah, for sure, just overcasting it, it's going to be more damage, uh, as we saw there in the previous game. So just that meter radius, it's just going to be a little bit harder to avoid these uh, very, very powerful Traitorkins. Last one, just going to be a minor one here, we are going to talk about Savage Dominion. Yet again, another summon, uh, it's going to be from 60 meters down to 50 meters. Just a very, very, very small debuff. So the next one here, we will be going on to Light Magic. So if we find that here, we are going to be starting, where is the light magic? There we go, Law of Light. We are going to be starting with Fast Protection with the Overcast. So Fast Protection upgraded is going to be 40 meter radius, and now it's going to be 35 meters. So pretty much going to be exactly the same, but you're just using that 5 meters, which, you know, can make the difference sometimes. If you're on a domination point, and it's just that one unit, that 5 meters could have helped there, uh, could have really helped you. You know, I've certainly seen games that have come within 50 to 200 points there in domination, which is having one unit on the point that could just stand just for a little bit longer to make you cap that point or not cap that point, can really, really make the difference. So maybe that five meter radius might make you think about overcasting or maybe not overcasting fast protection. The next one, yet again, uh, it's gonna be a pretty similar theme here. It's gonna be Light of Battle. Light of Battle, of course, is gonna be unbreakable in a 35 meter radius here in the new game. And on the previous one, it was gonna be 40. So yet again, losing five meter radius. The biggest hit of all is gonna come here with the overcast net of Amantok. 
So Netto Vamitov previously uh, used to be, uh, let's get the overcast there. So previously, is that, sorry, it's actually going to be a buff. My, my apologies, it's actually going to be a buff. I've got this the wrong way around. Uh, it's actually going to be going from 30 meters up to 35 meters. So it's actually going to be a buff here for Netta Vamitov. So I believe actually this, this spell was used quite a lot already and was overcast as some quite great ability there in Warhammer 2. I actually think here we're going to be seeing this spell used just a little bit more often. 35, or should we say 30 to 35 meter radius increase for a net is going to be quite huge indeed. Especially with things like Penumbral Pendulum being very strong, uh, Burning Head being previously pretty strong, and, and it looks pretty nice here in the new game as well. A 35 meter net, oh, it's going to be very nice. And the last one here is going to be the bonus time warp, and I'm sure here you can see what's coming. 40 meters going down here to 35. Nothing more needs to be explained when we overcast. It's going to be exactly the same there at 55 meters. There's no change in that, just going to be in the normal cast. So next here we will move on to, I believe it's the Little War, and we'll be starting here with Gorkle Fix It. So Gorkle Fix It here, uh, you can't overcast the spell. But it used to be a 40 meter radius, which is now going to be a 35 meter radius. Uh, so it's going to be a smaller meter radius here for this spell. And I believe it's going to be the same there for the Itchy Nuisance. And Itchy Nuisance is also going to be reduced on its effect range. Night Shroud is going to be the same. Uh, there's also going to be some other changes to Night Shroud. So Night Shroud has uh, quite a few different changes. So previously it used to be 41 second duration. It's uh, now going to be 60 meter duration for 35 meters. And uh, it's going to be thirty. It's going to be forty meters here for the regular. So I think the regular, um, it's kind of a slight buff, kind of not a slight buff. It's hard to say. You get ninety extra sections for five meters of less radius. Take that as you will. Decide whether you think that's a buff or a debuff. But for the overcast, quite different. Fifty-five meter radius for sixty seconds. Whilst here for the old overcast shroud, actually give you eighty-two seconds. So it's actually going to be longer, but it's still only going to be forty meters. So this one's going to be shorter but wider effect radius. So not too sure how to feel about this. So it's going to be the same duration. You just overcast it now for extra effect range. So you've got to decide here if you really think that this spell could potentially sort of pay any dividends for overcasting. So we're now going to move here on to the Law of Dark Magic. So there's going to be a couple of spells here. The first one is actually going to be the Power of Darkness. Power of Darkness has some nice changes. It used to be 30 seconds of damage to yourself. You're getting Winds of Magic here quite nicely. It actually tells you what you get in the game, which is quite nice. 80% power recharge rate and then uh, the reserves. If that's an actual improvement on the last game, I don't know. I haven't gone into the stats here. Uh, but you can see the damage to yourself as well that would cause 17 to 33 damage per second. If that is the same, awesome. The reason being why I think this is a buff 20 seconds of duration for this. So you're going to be getting Winds of Magic hopefully faster, I would have thought, and perhaps doing less damage to yourself. I'm hoping this is a buff. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't been through the stats here, but the previous one used to be 30 seconds. So depending on how these two interact, you know, if it's like the same damage, but you get less power recharge rate, you, you guys can probably do the maths, or I can try and do the math for you and maybe make a video on it. Either way, it looks potentially like it's going to be a good buff, but it's a big change indeed. So the next one here is going to be Soul Stealer. Soul Stealer actually yet again got a buff. Uh, did it need a buff? Absolutely not. Did it get a buff? Absolutely. Um, you can see here Soul Stealer, uh, a 35 meter uh, radius. Now it says miscast chance 15%. I'm Unless they fixed it where you don't have to miscast. So before Soul Stealer, you had to miscast to heal yourself, but it says miscast chance 15%. But it says here you get the same healing. So healing is going to be 12 seconds. So think of it about as an apotheosis. So it's going to be better than an Earth Blood. Uh, it's going to be about apotheosis levels. So you're going to be getting about 500 HP here. So actually having your caster on a mount is definitely going to be beneficial here for heal per second. But yes, as you can see, 35 meter radius compared to 30, and we all know how powerful Marathi and that Soul Stealer was previously. So we are going to be moving here on to Metal Magic. So Metal Magic, yet again, I think quite an underrated one in my personal opinion. But Metal Magic here, we are going to be going with Glittering Robe. Glittering Robe, you're going to see a change here. Uh, the only change is actually going to be uh, the overcast. So the overcast here is going to be 35 meter radius rather than 40. You can see a lot of these debuffs and buffs are going to be coming under 35. While a lot of the damage spells are going to be going from 30 up to 35. So it's not going to be making it all 35 meter radius in total. Duration is going to be the same. Cooldown is going to be the same. Wizard Magic is going to be the same. Uh, it's just going to be on a smaller radius. Glitching Road wasn't really used much before to any sort of, you know, amazing gameplay. Uh, but I, I see it being used even less here with a debuff to the overcast. 
So for the next one here, we are going to go on to the trans, uh, transformation of lead. So transformation of lead, yet again, similar debuff. Uh, it's going to go down uh, for both stages. It's going to go down and stay at 35 meters. Overcast is going to be 35 uh, and the same same on both sides, 40 here from Warhammer 2. So just a little bit of a debuff as well. And then it's going to be a buff for the final transmutation. So the final transmutation used to be 30 meters. It's now going to be 35 meters. Uh, me and the Rubber Duck have played a, an insane amount of games. And we're wondering, why does the spell feel so goddamn powerful? And the reason is, it's now 35 meters. And there is no limit to how many units you can damage. It's damage profile. Yet again, I don't know how powerful that is. If it's going to be less or more. But all I know is that it's wider. So these are the immediate things that I can see that have changed. So we're now going to move on here to a quite interesting one. We are going to go to the Law of Shadows. We're going to be starting here with the Withering. Uh, withering yet again is going to be another simple change. Uh, when it's overcast we are going to see a 35 meter radius rather than a 40 meter radius. You're not going to quite catch well, potentially not quite catch as many uh, units in this debuff, but everything else is going to be the same. Winds of Magic the same, um, cast duration etc is all going to be the same. <coughs> Another interesting one here is going to be the Penumbral Pendulum. So the Penumbral Pendulum is uh, is an interesting one. A lot of people have said this is uh, incredibly overpowered, and this could maybe be just due to the uh, duration. So, for example, here in Warhammer 3, duration was 3 seconds. It's gone down to 2 seconds now, and I believe it's going to be a little bit wider, as far as I've been told. And of course, we're going to be on the Ultra Unit Scale as well. So we're certainly going to be seeing... Uh, you know, a lot of damage here coming from this spell, and it's doing damage all the way through, and uh, it's certainly a bit of a menace here in the current game. So the fact that the duration's gone down, it looks like it's being more powerful, uh, it certainly could be a spell to keep an eye on here for maybe a few debuffs. The last one here in the roster is going to be the Oakham's Mind Razor. So the Oakham's Mind Razor is just going to be getting a debuff here to the Overcast, which is going to be 40 down to 35 meters. Now, there's 16 Winds of Magic. Did you ever see Oakham's Mind Razor? Not really, but you could see it maybe more here with the Magical, uh, magical Attack and Buse that could help here, you know, maybe up against all those uh, Chaos Factions. So for the next one here, we are going to be moving on to the Skaven magic. So we're going to go on to the Skaven spells of stealth. Uh, you know, a, a bit of a rare magic here, but still something I wanted to touch on as it's going to be changing. And it's going to be the overcast skitter leap is going to be the change. Uh, it's going to be the same winds of magic, but obviously we're going to be losing that meter radius. So 25% speed, uh, stalk unspottable, but it's going to be a smaller a smaller amount of units you can get in there. Or they're going to be bunched on top of each other. You're going to just be a little bit tighter and, you know, it'll be a little bit more on top of your micro. I think we're just going to see this even less. It's going to be the same here for the Armor and Darkness. So Armor and Darkness is going to be 40 meters, and it's going to be uh, 35 here for the Overcast on Armor and Darkness. Really like Armor and Darkness. You get Armor plus the physical resist uh, the Missile Resistance, which is pretty nice. 11 Winds of Magic is also used to be a 40 meters radius, now 35. It could do still, still do some nice stuff. Range is not too strong on Domination, but, you know, it can be quite nice there on the uh, land battles for sure. Brittle Bones is going to be sharing the same limelight here, which is uh, going to be a re reduction here on the meter radius, going from 40 down to 35. Now, Brittle Bones is strong. Uh, it died off really quickly when it came to the game. People loved it initially, and then realized it's extremely expensive to overcast for 18 wins of magic. And, it, you know, it, it, it lasts for a good amount of time, uh, but just reducing that radius, you know, really hurts it even more, because we didn't even see it much previously, and we're probably not going to continue to see it, sadly. So for the next group of spells, we are now going to be moving on here to the very special ones. And these are going to be the extras. So the Rune of Oath and Steel uh, is going to be here from the Runic Magic. Uh, another debuff. So it's going to be 40 meters down to 35 here. And Overcast is going to be the same. It's still going to be 35 meters. It's not increased. So it's just going to be a debuff there for that ability. Didn't see it at all. Probably not going to continue to see it. Just because of the Rune of Negation is just that much better. So, moving on to the next one, it's going to be the Incantation of Dissecation. This is going to be a change here in the Law of Nehekara. This is going to be the Debuff spell. So, the Debuff spell is 35 meters, uh, down from 40. So, just another little debuff, same Winds of Magic. It, it just loses 5 meters there on its effect range. Uh, it could be same tier as well for the Fog of the Damned. This is going to come from the Law of the Deep. This uh, yeah, is a pretty nice spell indeed. Uh, but it's going to be 35 meters. It is pretty cheap at 8 Winds of Magic for negative melee attack, negative leadership. Uh, so you're going to try and crump your opponents pretty quickly there with that, or prevent getting crumped, in fact. Um, yeah, it's only 35 meters here coming from... Uh, uh, actually, sorry, no, I do beg your pardon. This is actually 30 meters going up to 35 meters. Actually, it's a buff. 
Uh, I do apologize. That's going to be 30 meters going up to 35 meters, which is uh, quite an interesting one. Um, surprised this one was only 30 meters. But it's nice to see that they've uh, leveled that out, and that's actually going to be a buff here uh, for the, the Law of Deep, which we, we didn't really see already because the Law of Vampires is so strong. But actually, this is the first battle I've actually seen getting buffed. So there we go. That's going to be a 5 meter buff. Still don't think we're going to see it, however. So the next one is going to go to quite a strong Winds of Magic, which is going to be the only change for the Law of Fire. Uh, Law of Fire is a very, very strong Winds of Magic, but the Flaming Sword of Ruin went over... Uh, oh, actually, no, it's not even went over cast, actually. Uh, just the regular Flaming Sword of Ruin, because 35 meter radius, rather than uh, 40 now. Uh, it's going to be same second, same Winds of Magic. Oh, actually, the duration is going to increase, actually. I've just noticed that. Duration actually has increased by up to 28 seconds. Uh, so it's going to be smaller, but it's going to be increased on the duration, which is... Uh, that's interesting. That's interesting indeed. Um, it's going to go up to 56 seconds. Okay, so this looks like it's going to be a small debuff from the effect radius, but it's actually going to go up on the duration. So, yep, nice one there. Uh, what's the other ones here? We've got Curse of the Midnight Wind. That's going to come here from the Law of the Heavens. Uh, Curse of the Midnight Wind is going to be a 25 second duration. Going to be the same as the previous, uh, but it's going down to 35 meters. So, just losing another 5 meters here. And the last one is going to be Here We Go. So that's going to be from the big wah. So here we go. It's going to go down here. Uh, time duration is exactly the same. Uh, it's going to go down by five seconds. So you can see a lot of these here. A lot, a lot towards the end were a lot less minor things. But all of these, uh, all of these effects here that people use previously to increase melee attack and, and all these kind of things, you can see they've balanced a lot of the spells. Uh, a lot of damage spells have gone up. A lot have gone down. Um, and there's been some brilliant, brilliant changes indeed. Do feel free, of course, to go back and check out all these changes and, you know, bring up some conversation here in the, in, in the discussion down below about your thoughts and opinions. I'd love to know. So this video is going to be coming out to you late today. Of course, it took me uh, forever to get these pieces together. I had to individually do all of my own research. I didn't get any help on this. And, uh, you know, I, I went through and just tried to do as much as I possibly could. So hopefully here this gives you enough details to show you what has and hasn't changed in the game. And uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, of course, do feel free to smash that like button. It really does help on the channel. And do feel free to subscribe. I'll leave some comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. And if you haven't already, do check out that description for all my other social media platforms, including Twitch and most importantly, that Discord. Feel free to join. I've made a bunch of changes here in the Discord so you guys can, it's just a little bit more interactive, a little bit more user friendly, and there's going to be more changes coming here in the future. So I've been your boy Logic. I hope you've enjoyed this. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all very, very soon.